from on the other side. All right, welcome to Queen City News hometown here. I'm Brian Blakely in studio. And I'm Alicia Barnes. I'm live right here in Chira, South Carolina. Hey, these cuties just came up to be able to say hi to me. We have a whole audience out here on Centennial Park here in Chira. So many people are out here. Brian, this has to be one of the friendliest, most hometown places that we've ever been. It's absolutely incredible. And we picked one of the best days to be here on our hometown tour. So what is our Queen City hometown tour? It's every Wednesday during our 5 o'clock show. We pick a new city and a new town just to be able to showcase why people love to call a place like Chira home. And there's so much to see, not just the history and the great places to be able to eat and things to do. It's such a small knit community here in Chira, and I found that out. I was just on Main Street here. I walked into a gift shop, and there was a lady named Miss Becky. Started asking her why did she love to call Chira home. She goes, "Well, you know, I'm celebrating 53 years of marriage. My husband has a shop right across the street. He has a framing business. I told her the mayor is going to be on our show. She goes, "Oh, that's my neighbor." I mean, that's just how small knit this community is. Everybody knows every. Everybody. And today, I feel like we're family. Just before this newscast started, I had somebody come out and offer us collard green egg rolls. And you know I love to eat. So, I mean, this is just shows you just how, how much southern hospitality we have. But we have so much to show you. Uh, many consider Shira one of the prettiest towns in the south. Uh, you can be able to see here we have a lot in store for you for this hour. Uh, we have special stories. Maureen Wirtz is standing by to show you what makes the town so iconic. We have Tara Lane that's out here giving your pinpoint forecast. Brian Brian, as I send it back to you in the studio, I got something just for you because I know that you love the game of golf. I found out a golfing tip as to why so many people are coming from Charlotte all the way here to Shira, and the mayor is going to fill us in on that tip that we're going to find out as to why so many people say, hey, they're game, they're hitting them long, and they're hitting them straight, Brian. We're going to have to go to Shira then because if they got tips like that, that's where we all need to head. All right, looking forward to the rest of the hometown here <laughs> for the rest of the 5 o'clock. All right, thanks, Alicia. <laughs> I'm Chief Meteorologist Tara Lane, live in the town of Shira, South Carolina, for this week's Queen City Hometown Show. And what a beautiful day for us to be out here. A little on the cool side today, but we do have warmer temps coming. More rain and thunderstorms to talk about, too. I'll let you know when to expect that next to my pinpoint weather forecast. Maureen. Tara, we've got these Toy Story clouds here, and everybody is smiling here in Shira. And our first story is all about the sounds of this town and the man who is known all over the world. Brian, I keep cheesing. I'm smiling so big here because this place has been so welcoming. We've got a great show ahead. <laughs> oh, I love it. Can't wait to see it. And all those hometown stories and more here at 5. You're watching Carolina's own Queen City News. The most local news in the Carolinas continues after the break. Well, welcome back. We are live right here in Shira, South Carolina. I'm here on Centennial Park, and it just doesn't get any better than this. I mean, this is such good quality of life. Everybody's just out here enjoying themselves. Here's little Stevie right here hanging out with his friends. I mean, Brian, this is just such a scene, and it's not just the people that make Shira so special. I mean, we have gotten Southern hospitality on the highest level, I feel like, of all the hometowns so far. Probably the biggest crowd that we've seen in all of our hometowns, but the people make this place special, but as I said, it's, it's more than that. Uh, there's a genre of music that crosses all different cultures here, uh, here in Shira, South Carolina. And uh, when you think about jazz music, I want to bring in Maureen Wirtz right now, our hometown storyteller. Maureen, that jazz, I grew up in a jazz family. And so that <laughs> bop, 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 all that, you know, the, not just mm -hmm. the rhythm, the beat, but that, that showmanship, that improv. There is one celebrated jazz musician, the king of jazz more than any other, that has roots right here in Shira. Mm -hmm. Alicia, just under 6,000 people live here in Shira. It might be a small town but they've got some great stories to tell, like how one of the most influential jazz musicians of all time always made sure people knew Shira was home. It often passes by without anyone noticing. The sound of every small town. But in Shira, South Carolina, they have their own one-of-a-kind soundtrack. Dizzy Gillespie. Dizzy Gillespie. Salt Peanuts. Night in Tunisia. From the Dizzy Gillespie statue in the center of town 
to the riser in the band classroom at Shira High School. Dizzy is celebrated all over. One of the things I always liked is that he always started off his concert or a piece of music by saying, Hi, I'm Dizzy Gillespie. I'm from Shira, South Carolina. And he'd always mention that he was from Shira. Band director Thomas Finnegan has been teaching at the high school for two years. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> at first, I was going to choose the flute, um, but then I couldn't get a sound out on the flute, so trumpet was my second option. In the back row is high school senior Chris Esau playing the instrument Dizzy was known for. I think at first, when you first play, it's like, it's kind of difficult. While they have their official band for all the games and events, they're starting something new. The last recorded time that I saw on, on the state's website was 1999. For the first time in 23 years, the high school now has a jazz band. <laughs> A tradition Thomas was happy to bring back. Music for me is a feeling, so I can hear any piece of music and it can take me to back to a time or a place. All around the world, Dizzy was known as the king of jazz. But here, he's known as a hometown hero who always remembered where he came from. Thomas said it best, music is a feeling, and you can even hear the jazz band playing right now. The Dizzy is celebrated all over town. They've got the statue behind me. There are banners up here. Alicia, he is just one person. So many people are proud to say he's from Shira. It's so cool because you know what? I mean, when you think about the history of jazz and somebody who played with, you know, Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, that that legacy is left right here in Shira. I want to bring in the Shira Jazz Band right now who's playing live. There's only one way to top this, and this is with an encore. Let's take a listen to them. We want to thank them for coming out, showing us again that Southern hospitality. Tara Lane, you are very close to where this jazz band is playing right now. I mean, so impressed that these are high school students. Yes, I know. They are right behind me. So I've had a chance to say hi to a lot of them and their parents and so many other folks here coming out to say hi to us here in the such welcoming town of Shira. I am standing outside of the Lyceum Museum here right off of Market Street. And they're also getting ready for the Big Spring Festival annual event. It happens on Saturday. And I was talking about the weather. Tina over there in Town Hall, she was a little concerned. She said, OK, are you going to push this rain away, like you said, for the afternoon? And I said, yes, it looks like it's going to end after the first half of the day. The afternoon should be drier, but hopefully the morning doesn't get too dicey with the chance of some storms on the way, too. But right now, no stormy weather in sight, no rain in sight. It is just perfect a blue sky, some scattered puffy Toy Story-looking clouds like Maureen mentioned. It's cooler today, though. Temperatures have struggled to break out of the 50s. We've got 61 right now in this part of Chesterfield County. The wind is nice and calm. And so with that calm wind and mostly clear sky tonight, that's going to lead to a chillier night with some patchy frost out there by tomorrow morning as well. We've got 50s up in the mountains too, and the theme has been upper 50s to lower 60s area-wide. High pressure giving us this beautiful weather today, and you know what? It's going to stretch on over into another day tomorrow. So as I said, mostly clear, light wind tonight. There could be some patchy frost out there, mainly surrounding the city of Charlotte where temperatures will be a little bit colder. For the most part, it will stay a little above freezing, but we will get down to freezing up there in the higher elevations for tomorrow morning. So a chilly start but you know what? Tomorrow afternoon is actually going to be warmer by about 10 degrees in some neighborhoods. And we'll have some sunshine out there as well. So just another beautiful day. Carolina blue sky all around. We check out Futurecast and here is when the next chance of rain rolls in. So notice on Friday, this is not tomorrow, this is Friday. We have increasing clouds. Most of the scattered showers and storms are still back off to the west. And this is in advance of another cold front. But as that cold front gets closer, moves in by Friday night, we will be tracking at least some scattered rain, potentially some rumbles of thunder. That's going to last for the first half of the day on Saturday. But notice by 3 o'clock and beyond, most of that looks to clear out. And it's going to pave the way for a nice and dry Sunday. 
today. Even though we're talking about a cold front, though, moving through, it's not going to cool down much. I mean, temperatures are still forecast to be on the uh, little bit of an unseasonably warm side going into next week. So the mountain forecast back to sunshine for another day tomorrow. But then you can see late Friday into Saturday, we have the showers. And yes, a few storms returning. Sunday is looking dry. Early next week will start to turn a little more unsettled again uh, with more showers and storms returning by the middle of the week. So high temperatures tomorrow with that sunshine back in the upper 60s. We'll hit around 70 here in Chesterfield County in Chiraw. Mid upper 60s, around 70, more of the same all across the Piedmont. So pretty similar temperatures all around. Just know we'll be a little warmer than today. And then we'll even approach 60 up in the mountains too. Seven-day forecast shows the rain chance returning late Friday into Saturday. Sunday is looking like that dry half of the weekend. And we are still in the 70s to near 80 through this time next week with storm chances returning by the middle of the week, guys. All right, Tara, thanks for that. You know what? With that great jazz performance, we're going to consider this intermission. We're going to take a little bit of a break from our hometown tour. But i got to show you this. These guys are sporting the Queen City T-shirts, and they're out here having so much fun here in Chiraw, South Carolina. You guys having fun? Yeah! You having fun? I mean, I think they're stealing the show out here. We have so many people coming out just supporting us here at Queen City News. But, Brian, again, this is intermission. We have more to come on the second part of our hometown tour. Uh, I love it. Sunshine. You got Dixie down there. You got some Disney. Gillespie, and you got all the kids, which make it even better. Shira, what a great we place. Got, we have little Stevie right here. There you go, Stevie. Come Hello, here. Stevie. You, you just made TV. You can wave. Oh. <laughs> wave. He's doing a little dance right now, pulling up his pants. All right, we're going to go ahead. Let's say all bye. Right. And welcome back to our Queen City Hometown Tour. We're live right here in Shira, South Carolina. You're taking in a listen to the Shira High School Jazz Band performing. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful to be able to listen to. We're so happy that they came out to give us some of that Southern hospitality. And that just shows you Shira, South Carolina is just so representative of just wonderful people. I mean, we felt it coming in. There's so many people here that are out camp coming to be able to see us here on Queen City News at Centennial Park. And it's just so nice to be able to have uh, the people really greeting us. And I want to bring in storyteller Maureen Wartz right now. Maureen, when we talk about the people here in Shira, uh, there's been some huge job losses, and it's really hard to talk about, but it's a thriving community at the same time as what we're finding. But that close-knit community of people coming together, there's a lot to talk about. And there's so much to talk about, they actually have their mm -hmm. own newspaper. Yeah, Alicia, local news has major local impacts. And we start thinking about small hometown papers. We've seen this happen across the country where small towns lose their local newspapers. And Chira was heading that way until a group of journalists stepped up. We wanted to be the scrapbook of the county. It's a blur from start to finish. But the words are perfectly fit into columns, the pages folded and stacked with precision. A modern day printing press, proudly put on by the journalists who decided this news was worth writing down. A lot of communities are losing their local paper. If you ask Jane Pig, she was always a journalist, even back when she was a fourth grader, making her radio debut. And I found out, well, I can talk faster than I can type, so I believe I'll do broadcast. For many years, Shira had a hometown paper until everything slowed down in the early 2000s and the paper was sold. They got rid of people who had been with them for 20 years, 30 years, long time. But this story doesn't have that typical ending because there's Jane and Joan Yates. The residents of the county are creating the history of the county, but we are preserving it. The two of them and the other journalists who had been let go got together and formed a newspaper, one that partners with the local radio station. You're listening to Classic Hits 93.9. Which Jane owns. And the stories that we tell are your stories. The stories are printed weekly on a paper with a name that does exactly what a paper is meant to do. Oh, I, I can never remember the name of the newspaper. And we just say, it's the link. The link, it's like a link. You know, you're all linked up and you're linked around and the link newspaper brings everything together. Some may call it old school, but from the writers to the people they write about, all captured in the columns is a sense of home. 
So people line up to get the link every single week. And I love the way that they described it as the scrapbook of the county because there really is something special about cutting out that article and hanging it on your fridge or putting it in your scrapbook and keeping it for years to come. Alicia? Maureen, you just find the best stories. You really do. I mean, it's just so much to talk about here in Shira. There really is. And wouldn't you agree, this is one of the friendliest places that we've ever visited. Yes. I mean, everybody <laughs> out here just wants to be able to talk and communicate, right? Well, speaking of talking yes. and lots to talk about, I want to bring in the mayor of Shira, South Carolina, Mayor Andy Ingram. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I mean, I, I feel like this Southern hospitality, even behind us, I mean, there has to be like 50 people that just came out just recently to be able to say hi to us. Uh, is this just what Shira is all about, the oh, people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we welcome everybody to Shira. Yeah. Get that Southern hospitality. And you've noticed that people actually come from Charlotte and other places. You had a, a, a ladies that came from Monroe recently. Correct. Tell me Last about week. that. Week. They have an outing about twice a year, and they come. They got a favorite restaurant. They come, and uh, I sat down and had lunch with them last week. They, just a good day outing. We have a group uh, from Salisbury uh, of ladies that come several times a year. They got their favorite restaurant. I, We've got golfers coming in from Charlotte. Yo, we're not, we're going to get the golf to get away in just one <laughs> second. I want to get to that in a minute. But uh, I just thought that was so interesting because a lot of people pass through Shabra on their way to the beach. They do. But there really is a lot to be able to see and do here. Um, the job loss. I do want to bring that up. Um, there's some resources that I recently learned about here in Shabra that if you are looking for a job, if you recently lost your job, talk to me about the impact on Shabra and then also these resources that people can use. Right. Well, it definitely it's, it's got an, uh, 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 an effect on our economy mm -hmm. and our jobs. But uh, we've been through it before, and we've rebounded. Uh, it's it's going to hurt, but it's not going to cripple us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got fortunate to have Northeastern Technical College here right. in our community that is going get, to get involved. They train the workforce. They will go in and placement, work with these employees and mm -hmm. try to help place them in other jobs, train them for new jobs and so forth. So. Northeastern Technical College is a key resource for, for those that are looking for new jobs okay. and training. They can check with Northeastern Technical College. Very good College. information there. And I want to talk about this golfing thing now because I have a co-anchor, Brian Blakely, who loves golf. And I heard from you that you said a lot of people come from Charlotte to Shiraz to play golf. What's the secret? That's, well, it's a Shiraz State Park. It's 18-hole championship golf course. Uh, we have snowbirds coming in Shiraz right now from all over the country, but uh, every week there are people, groups from Charlotte that can come to Shiraz, get play for a fraction of the cost, and get decent tea times. I mean, they come literally every week, different groups. So that's a way to be able to get your swing, you know, hitting them long, hitting them straight, getting that together. But here in Toronto, I've got to be able to say the southern hospitality, but not only that, the southern food. There are some really good choices. I don't want to single anybody out because you don't want to play favorites, but the southern cooking here is really good. It is good, and they put it out buffet style, so you need all you want. And, you know, it's funny you say that because when I was doing my research, there's like three or four different buffets going on around the same time at lunchtime. It is. So that everybody can be able to get the grub on here in Shiraz. Exactly right. You walk around Shiraz, you can see some people that have been eating pretty doggone yes, good at these yes, buffets. Yes. <laughs> All right, Mayor Ingram, thank you so much. Well, and we, this is your Queen yes, City hometown you. shirt that we are giving you. As you see, yeah. all these kids have them on here in Satoka oh, yeah. Park, so they're enjoying them. But Brian, as I send it back to you in the studio, there you go. There's a golfing tip for you of how to be able to improve your game for a fraction of the cost. Fraction of the cost, and you go, you got a good tea time down there, and you got some good food and the buffets. You can't beat that. I'm going to have to go down there. As long as they can guarantee me I won't lose a ball then then we'll be there for sure he said he said he didn't want to lose a ball <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. All right, great. Yeah, good job, Alicia. Love it. We are just having the best time here at our Queen City News hometown show this week in Shiraz, South Carolina. Everyone here has been so welcoming. We have the high school jazz band playing behind us. They're about to, to uh, uh, start playing some music here again in a little bit. Beautiful weather today. I'll let you know how long it's going to stay nice and sunny. That's next. Maureen. Tara, welcoming, I think, is the word of the day here. Everyone has been so kind. And our final story is all about the spirit of Shiraz. Now, let's take a live look from our South Park camera, where our Queen City hometown tour continues right after the break.
Oh, welcome back. We're live right here in Shiraz, South Carolina. We're on our Queen City hometown spring tour where every Wednesday we go to a different city and town just to showcase why people love to call Shiraz home. And our executive producer, Janet Parker, who works behind the scenes, but with this face, you know she can be on the camera, right? Well, she is from Shiraz. And ever since I have known Janet Parker, she talks about why Shiraz is so amazing. I mean, you just love your hometown. Yes, I do. And it today has proven that. I've had classmates who've come out. My uncle came out surprised me so it's just it's all about family here in Sherrill that's why I love it every time I look up I see Janet hugging a new person and, and she just as she said her uncle just surprised her uncle Charlie doesn't want to be on camera but we're gonna wave to uncle Charlie hey uncle Charlie Janet though has been helping us out handing out our I've Queen City out shirts. hometown shirts I feel like everybody in Sherrod has a shirt on right now. <laughs> yes, and I told them whenever they're in Charlotte, make sure they wear it. Yes, so yes. <laughs> I want to bring in our storyteller, Maureen Wartz. I mean, she is finding such interesting people. I mean, and we had the Sherrod High School Jazz Band yes. on during live. Maureen, the people of Sherrod, I can't say enough. Again, this is the friendliest hometown stop that we have been on. But when you think about what Janet has said about her hometown, it's that pride that really makes those mm -hmm. dreams come alive. Alicia, this is a place where Southern charm is a real thing, and it's a place where people show up for each other in beautiful and unexpected ways. Sometimes life can feel like a never-ending to-do list, and people get lost looking for the end rather than enjoying the journey. Whether it's on a tractor or a lawnmower, Calvin King knows how to get the job done. I'll be afraid to say, I built a bunch of them. It all started 13 years ago. I had had an injury to my shoulder. When he showed up. She could do it all herself. And she didn't have nobody else to help her. To help out Jackie Clark. Everything you see around here, his hands have touched. And he's been at Chase and Time Ranch ever since. The person he is, he's a kind person. He's very easygoing. <laughs> There's always something. A fence needing fixing, a field plowing. Each day different, but busy. I can't work all day like I used to, so I do, do what I can. Calvin is 82 and has plenty of dreams for this place because he's not worried about what needs to be done. The joy is something to do. There's so, something to do. Instead, He's looking and living for what people often forget to prioritize. Well, I'm just happy here. I'm just happy here. A lesson from Mr. King. Make sure to add what's important to life's list, for it's not time he's chasing. Calvin literally just warmed my heart. He told us, I love being there because they love me and I love them. And that is literally the spirit of Shara. And he has so many plans for that place. And he's got a lot of upgrades in mind, but I think he has been the best upgrade there. Alicia. Oh, it's just so amazing. Mr. Calvin, or I'm always going to remember this story. Maureen, Tara, I mean, just an incredible um, atmosphere out here. Mm -hmm. It's just the people, I can't say enough about it, about the warm welcome. Just everybody likes to chit chat and talk and you hear everybody's story. Uh, it's just incredible. This has been an incredible hometown. And uh, Tara, I love that every time we go to a live shot with you, we can hear those sounds of the jazz high school students from the jazz yes. band over at Shira High School. Uh, the weather, we could not have picked a more perfect day. Uh, uh, it's beautiful over here on Main Street where you are. What does it look like? It's gorgeous, and I was actually talking with Carl, uh, the groundskeeper here, and he was saying, you know, we were mowing the lawn, and he was talking about the azaleas, which we are, it's hard to see from this picture, probably, but we're kind of surrounded by so many azalea bushes. Of course, we had the freeze, though, and a couple rounds of freezing temperatures just a couple of weeks ago, and so that kind of, you know, hindered and kind of... Um, uh, uh, hindered the, the growth there a little bit, but now we're, they're popping back out and we're, we're seeing so many uh, beautiful pink flowers surrounding us. So just a, a picturesque spring site and we have those spring temperatures today, actually a little bit cooler uh, considering this uh, part of spring here in this part of March. We've got temperatures that are only sitting in the 50s to around 60 today. Uh, normally in Charlotte, we should be talking highs 
up in the upper 60s, but we are running cooler than that today. 62 degrees was the official high after starting out uh, pretty chilly this morning. We've got temperatures right now in the 50s up in the mountains and upper 50s to lower 60s in most other neighborhoods, and including here in Chiron where the wind is nice and calm. We've got high pressure in charge, so giving us that beautiful sunshine. And tomorrow we get another day of it after a mostly clear and kind of frosty night tonight, too. We'll end up around 30, 39 uh, degrees in the Queen City, upper 30 mid to upper 30s, but uh, we will have some slightly colder spots surrounding the city of Charlotte, so that's where we could have some of those frosty areas, and right down to freezing up in the mountains, too. But tomorrow, we actually warm up a lot more, right up to about 70 degrees, lots of sunshine as the wind stays light. Now, we do have another rain chance and possibly strong storm chance coming in for part of the weekend, so by late Friday... We'll have increasing clouds. Uh, most of the rain stays away until later in the day. And so late afternoon and evening, that's when we can start to see some showers and maybe some isolated storms moving in. But the front not coming through until Saturday. So the first half of the day, Saturday morning, looks to be the wettest. Again, we'll have to watch for the chance of some strong storms there. But then everything does clear out, it looks like, later in the day. So it won't be a total all-day washout. And certainly not a washout of a weekend with dry weather returning on Sunday. The temperature outlook, even though we're talking about a cold front coming in, we're going to stay on the warm side going into next week. Warm conditions up and down the eastern half of the country there. All the colder weather will be bottled up to the west. So the mountain forecast, sunshine for another day tomorrow. It's late Friday into Saturday that we get more of the scattered showers and some storms. Sunday, we are back to sunshine. So there's a look at those low temperatures in the morning. We'll be right around freezing, as I said, in the mountains, 30s to near 40, including out here in Chirab. But nice warm-up tomorrow afternoon. We hit about 70 in this part of Chesterfield County, mid to upper 60s, around 70 up through the Charlotte Metro, too. So a beautiful Thursday coming up. Real nice weather to be outside. Mid-60s heading up toward the foothills, and we'll be close to 60 up there in the uh, higher elevation. Seven-day forecast shows, again, those showers and storms returning for late Friday into Saturday. Sunday is dry, and we are going to keep those highs in the 70s, around 80 going into next week, and maybe tracking some more spring storms there by next Tuesday, Alicia. Tara, I have to be able to say this. The sounds that we're hearing as you were doing your pinpoint weather forecast, those are high school students. I mean, I felt like I was listening to a jam yeah. off with Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker and Duke Ellington. I mean, it's just so incredible, Brian, that these are high school students having the legacy of Dizzy Gillespie, who was born right here in Shiraz, South Carolina, 1917. Yeah, what an inspiration and what a great uh, sound of spring out there today, too, with everyone out enjoying the uh, a uh, day in downtown. Love it, you guys. We'll see you in just a bit. Well, we hope that you enjoyed our hometown show here from Shiraz, South Carolina. As I bring in Maureen Wirtz. Maureen, next week we are headed where? To Charleston. We're doing a couple travel special hometown shows because we want to go to the places that you all like to hit up and travel during the summer. So we're bringing you the stories of Charleston. But today, it's about Shara. We've got the paper. And now I am going to send it over to the high school jazz band and let them play some beautiful music for us as we enjoy our hometown show here in Shara. Oh, Brian, I think they played all my favorites. You know, that first one, Salt Peanuts, Salt Peanuts. Oh, just such good music that we've had out here in Shira. That's going to do it for us for our News at Five. Ah, oh, great show, guys. A lot of fun to watch. Prettiest town in Dixie. You got that right. Can't wait to go to Charleston <laughs> next week. That's Shira. they got a lot to live up to.